back. She just snuck up on him and touched his clothes, and bam, she's healed. And Jesus says, who, who touched me? The faith was automatically rewarded. That's amazing. Where did she get the notion that touching his clothes was going to heal her? Who dreamed that up? Did it ever happen before up until this time? Did it happen in the Old Testament? Did it happen in her in proximity? This kind of faith was actually unprecedented. It never, never happened. Nobody got healed. Now, there was a little bit of a hint in the Old Testament. It was not exactly the same. Somebody who was dead got thrown onto the body of Elijah, or not Elijah, um, Elijah, Elijah, okay. and uh, of course Samuel or Elijah, I forget. <coughs> but touched the body, the dead body of the prophet, and boom, got healed. But that was it. This was, this was just the clothes of Jesus. So, in terms of exact situ situation, there was no precedent for it. So for this woman to believe that this would happen would have to be purely faith. Because she couldn't link it to anything else. There was no other situation where she could compare this to. She didn't look at the Old Testament and go, oh, that's what I need to do to get healing. So here, you know that faith is genuine, man. Something like this never happened before, but you believe it. And this woman was in good company, actually. Because the Old Testament has all kinds of situations where people experience things first time and had exercised faith based on it. See, Noah believed in rain when there had never been rain. Never rained before, and God says, I'm going to rain on the earth and flood it. And Noah says, okay. What's rain, God? Didn't even know what rain was. Never seen it. Abraham believed that a barren woman past the age of childbearing could have a baby. Would you have believed God if he told you that your grandmother was going to have a baby? <laughs> I mean, somebody comes to you. Let's say your dad comes to you and says, Hey, guess what? Your grandmother's going to have a baby. You're, sick. You're crazy, Dad. Get out. Let's go to a doctor. Let's say go to a pastor. Go to anybody and say, Your grandmother's going to have a baby. He <laughs> said, You're crazy. Get out. Abraham believed in the resurrection when nobody had been raised from the dead before. He was about to slaughter his son based on the, the reality, the faith, that if I kill my son, God has to raise him from the dead because God promised through my son that I'm going to have more kids. I'm going to have grand, grandkids through him. So if I kill him, he, he has to raise him from the dead. That's the only way he's going to keep the promise. Because I understood that I did it wrong before by trying to seek my posterity through Hagar. And he said he wasn't going to do that again. He's going to believe God. And then Moses believed that the waters of the Red Sea could divide in half so that the people could walk on dry ground. That has never happened before. Never in history. Joshua and Caleb believed that a group of civilians, common people like you and me, could take over territory guarded by lifetime soldiers. That has never happened before. Gideon believed that a group of 300 men could defeat 
hundreds of thousands of soldiers. That has never happened before. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believed that they would survive if thrown into fire that was so hot that when they were thrown in, the people who pushed them in died because of the flames. Daniel believed that angels could prevent lions from devouring his body. These things have never happened before. Mary believed that the Holy Spirit could get her pregnant without the involvement of a man. Remember how ridiculous that sounded? Remember? I said, you know, go ahead, go to your brother or your sister, mom and your dad, and say, hey, mom, dad, brother, I got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> everybody, that's right, everybody would laugh and say, you're crazy? How could you lie like that? That is just messed up. Blaming God for your pregnancy? Come on. Ridiculous. I mean, just imagine the eyes that were staring at her every time she went anywhere. She blamed the Holy Spirit and pregnant her. It's ridiculous. She had to deal with that all of her life. Afterwards. And John the Baptist believed that the Lamb of God could take away the sin of the entire world. Believing in something that has never happened before is a sure sign of faith. What is God challenging you to believe? What is God challenging you to have faith in? Has it ever happened before? If it never happened before, that's a pretty good sign. Remember I told you the story about how I got my second job in college? So I'm going to remind you because it relates to this. I had a job in Baltimore, and then I had to go back to school. And after my six months of school, I had to get a, another job because six months of work, six months of study, six months of work, six months of study, in the middle three years of my five, five year college career, okay? called the co-op program. So I, I had my six months of work, went back to school, and now it's time for me to go back to work. And we were wondering, are they gonna ask us to come back to work? And this was a job that was in Baltimore. And so it was getting really close. I was supposed to start in January. November came around. And finally, like at the middle of it, they said, oh yeah, we want you back. So we thought, great. But I asked the Lord, do you want me to go back there? Because I just became a Christian. And I want to know what God wants me to do. So I was praying, my roommate was praying, and I asked the Lord to make it clear, should I go back or should I stay in Philadelphia? Look for a job here. All kinds of details came in, and finally I came to the conclusion that I was supposed to stay in Philadelphia. But there was no job yet, so I didn't have a company saying, hey, come and work for me. So if I said no to this offer, I don't have anything to go to. And that's stupid, according to the world, right? According to non-faith. That is stupid. You don't say no to a job and then start looking. You find a job and then say no. That's smart. But I said no. Because I believe that God would provide for me. Now as a brand new Christian, that was like almost impossible. For me, for, for me to do that was just stretching me to the breaking point, like a, uh, a rubber band. Almost, a little more, and I'm done. So I told my family, and they said I was crazy. My sister said, and she's the one who was paying for my college education. I mean, I had loans, I had grants, and then the rest of it was being made up by my working sister. Okay. And she said, we're not going to pay for your education. 
was just done. That's ridiculous. And I said, you know, God is leading me to go to Philadelphia. I believe he'll provide me a job. And, and she said, well, what if he doesn't? I believe he's going to provide for me a job. She said, what if he doesn't? Or if he doesn't provide for me this way, he'll provide for me some other way. Right? So now, class ends in December. I still don't have a job. And I'm praying. I'm praying that the Lord is going to provide this for me. I mean, I'm always hanging on this. So right after I come home, I get a call from the relocation, uh, not the, the job, co-op job coordinator, and he said, hey, I have this uh, guy who's looking for a uh, employee at RCA, and I heard that RCA was a really good company to work for, engineer company. And they changed their name since, but RCA. So I said, great. And then he says, I had him, I had him on the other line, he told me, and I need to know what your GPA is. I said, 3.5, and so he said, okay, he goes over, he puts me on hold, goes over to the other guy, you know, talks to him, comes back and he says, you got the job. And I'm like, what? He didn't see me, doesn't have my resume, he never spoken to me, interviewed me, I got a job without an interview. What is that, when does that ever happen? And he goes, come and fill out the application tomorrow. And I said, great, because I was going there anyway. Because I had to go back to get more of my stuff. And the timing of the Lord, of the Lord was just perfect. And I'm going, good night. That has never, in the history of my interaction with people, I've never heard of somebody getting a job with that in it. Faith needed an opportunity. And it has never happened before. And if it's never happened before, you can be pretty sure that this is a faith opportunity. Third, praise God for His grace of faith. What do I mean by that? When God gives the faith opportunity, He rewards you for exercising it. Jesus didn't know who extracted power from him, but he was sure somebody did. How could he not know? God made it so that it's automatic. I mean, that's just like crazy. You mean to tell me, uh, don't treat God like a vending machine is actually false? You know, you put the coin in the machine, you push a few buttons, up, up pops the goodie, right? Isn't that how we treat God? You pray, you know, give us this, and then, and then if He does, we pray, then we walk out, right? Because that's just how we treat Him at times. We're not supposed to treat Him like that, people say. Well, when it comes to faith, you can! That's crazy! You can exercise faith in such a way that it's automatically rewarded. Jesus didn't even have to know about it. What? I mean, eventually, out. But that's just details. What happened was demonstrating that God automatically rewards your faith. Jesus has allowed the possibility that when people exercise faith, they can get what they need automatically. on that for a while. How did God do that? Why is it? What? It is that essential. It is that important. It is that vital. You are emphasizing faith that much. Even when Jesus was unaware that the healing took place, he didn't stop it. I don't know if he can stop it if he's set it up so that it's automatic. Faith in them is rewarded always. Always. In 
Malachi, God tells us to test him. If we tithe or give a tenth of all that we get, we will never lack anything, it says. Did you ever test him? He says it'll be all right. You won't be able to handle the amount of blessing that he pours on your lap. Because you obeyed in this principle of God. Wasn't that a good question in verse 30? Who touched my clothes? He didn't say who touched me. He said who touched my clothes. Why did he say it that way? Everybody was pressing on him. But it was the person who touched his clothes that got healed. Why? Because that's the way that she was thinking. She believed that and that's what she did. The faith was in the clothes. Not in him. His clothes. That's what she believed and that's what she did and that's why she got rewarded. He can feel somebody touching him. But when somebody touched his clothes, it was unique because power went out. And he could feel the power going out. Now, Jesus was, was looking for the woman because he wanted to scold her for stealing healing. Stealing healing. He wanted to affirm her faith and bless her. Let's look at her faith. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. It was purely personal. She came to Jesus with fear and trembling, thinking she was in trouble. But Jesus never rebukes her for exercising faith in the appropriate way. Mm -mm. She exercised her faith in the right way. She believed in Jesus' ability and believed in something that had never happened before and acted on it. So Jesus credits her by saying, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Your, in other words, your faith is being rewarded. You are being rewarded. It will not be taken away. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. You didn't have to worry about it anymore. So, let's ask ourselves a question. Ask each other the question, how is your faith? Are you applying it to your difficult situation? If you're not experiencing a difficult situation, you're probably like not living in reality. I don't think anybody who is living life is not experiencing a difficult situation or a difficult scenario in one form or another. One way or another, you're experiencing it. To the proportion that you are able to handle it. When we're young, it seems pretty big for our age. And then when we get older, we look at your problems and go, that's not big. I tell you, <laughs> adults have big problems. Some of those problems are you. And maybe you think some of those problems are your parents. So look for faith opportunities. You may be sitting in one right now. As a matter of fact, I think it's just a matter of degree, not you don't have any. It's not a matter of, I don't have any faith opportunities. No. You have faith opportunities. Some may seem small and others may be big. So you are constantly having to exercise faith in order to deal with your situation. And God has given you plenty of opportunities 
to please Him. Are you pleasing Him by faith? By exercising faith? Whatever the situation you're in, whether you have put Him on the top of your, top of your list or the bottom of your list, are you exercising faith? Because that's the, that's the one thing that He's going to reward you automatically for, and that's the one thing He's going to rebuke you for, primarily. And we learn from this woman that even though she didn't know Jesus personally, because she exercised faith in Him, Jesus rewarded her. And He will reward you, and He will reward me in the same way as we exercise faith. It is the only thing that leads us in. Every day, you are challenged to exercise faith. Look for those opportunities. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are not devoid of opportunities to exercise faith. That every day, in every situation, we're running, in, running into it. Some may seem bigger than others, but here we are living life, and in life there are plenty of opportunities to please you. Even in the sheer simple obedience to your word is a faith opportunity. Do I believe that you will provide for me? Do I believe that you are able to heal? Do I believe that you are able to provide what I need? Do I believe that you are willing to reveal your word to me so that I will be obedient to you? Have you given me opportunities to give, relieve someone, or to demonstrate compassion, or to show favor? These are faith opportunities that are before us daily. And we pray that you would enable us, give us greater faith to believe that you are capable that we can believe in things that have never happened before because we pursue faith in you. We pray that you would transform us so that we will indeed please you in every way and bear fruit in every good work and grow in our relationship with you. Pray to you.